this guide I'm going to show you how to set up PS3 emulator RPCS3, taking you through every step from download and installation to some setup tips to get your games looking sharp on high resolution displays. It's worth considering the following before you start the guide. Take a look at the recommended PC requirements. PS3 emulation is pretty demanding on your system, so be sure to manage your expectations. Here are the system recommendations on the RPCS3 site. You'll need at least one PS3 game, and if you have a controller, ensure this is connected before launching RPCS3. If you've watched any of my other video guides, I'm a big fan of the 8 bit Doe products, and I'm using the 8 bit Doe Pro 2 controller in this guide. Check the links in the description for this if you're interested. So, first of all, you're going to need to download RPCS3 from the official website. So visit rpcs3.net and click the download link from the top menu, then download the version you require. Once you've downloaded RPCS3, you should create a folder on your system in which you can extract the files. I'm saving RPCS3 on my external drive, but of course feel free to save your copy wherever it suits you. RPCS3 is a portable emulator, so you have total freedom where you want to install it. Now that you've created a folder to save the emulator into, Simply extract the file you've just downloaded into the new folder. You can use software such as WinRAR or 7-Zip on Windows to do this. RPCS3 requires the use of an official PS3 firmware file, so you'll need to download this from the official PlayStation site. It's easy to obtain. Simply visit the address on the screen and follow the instructions to download the PS3 firmware file. I'll also place a link in the description for you. Do note that your browser may try to block the download of the file. For example, Google Chrome may suggest blocking the download, but be assured the download is safe, as long as you're downloading it from the official PlayStation site, that is. So click Keep if Google Chrome prompts you to continue to download the file. Next, launch RPCS3 and click Continue on the pop up that appears upon launch. Now you'll need to go to the menu File and Install Firmware, and then select the file you've just downloaded. RPCS3 will then proceed to install the firmware into the emulator. You should then see a successfully installed message appear once this is completed. Next, we'll move on to controller setup. Select the pads icon found in the menu ribbon in the upper part of the emulator. This will then show the controller settings screen. RPCS3 is compatible with several controllers out of the box, so, for example, in the handlers section, you can select keyboard, DualShock 3 and 4 controllers, as well as a PS5 DualSense. If you're using something like an Xbox controller or an X input compatible controller, select X input. This will then auto configure the button mappings and set them up for you. Click save to save the controller settings. If you do wish to remap any controls, this is really easy to do. Simply click on the button you wish to remap, then press the button on the controller you wish to assign. Adding games to RPCS3 is also easy to do. Simply go to the menu file, add games, then navigate to your PS3 games folder, then click select folder. Your games will then be imported and appear in the RPCS3 window. We're now going to look at installing game update files. We're now emulating games of an era where online patching and updates are commonplace. Fortunately, RPCS3 also allows you to apply these update files to games, so you can benefit from any bug fixes or improvements these updates may bring. You'll need to find and download these update files yourself, but RPCS3 makes easy work of the installation side of things. You will need to ensure that the update files are specifically for the same version of the game though. For example, the version of Gran Turismo 6 I'm using has the serial number BCES01893, so the update files I need to download and apply must match this version too. Once you've downloaded your update files, you can either go to File, Install, Packages, Wraps, EDATS menu and select Update Files or you can simply select all of the update files for the game you wish to update and then drag them into the RPCS3 window. Note that update files have to be installed in the correct order, starting with the earliest update first. If you try to apply multiple update files at once, RPCS3 will give you the option to reorder them if required. Now we move on to the emulator settings. Emulator performance will largely depend on the power of your system, but there are a few simple settings that are easy to update which will help you get the best performance possible. So first of all, select the config icon. This is where you can access all of the emulator settings, but most specifically we'll be looking at the CPU and GPU tabs. The first setting can be found under the CPU tab. Here you'll want to check Enable SPU Loop Detection. Next, go to the GPU tab. 
Here you'll find everything relating to the video output of the emulator. Everything from resolution settings to anti-aliasing settings can be modified here. We're going to focus on the resolution settings in this example. I recommend leaving the default resolution to 1280x720, but if you're looking to improve the resolution appearance, then use the resolution scale bar. Increase this to the resolution your screen supports. For example, 150% is 1920x1080, so if you're using a 1080p screen, this is perfect. If you find that games are not running smoothly, then test pulling this setting back a notch and see if that helps performance. Once you've finished adjusting your settings, click the Save button. RPCS3 also offers custom game configurations. Since PS3 emulation and RPCS3 are still relatively new, you'll find that game performance varies a lot. To help with getting things optimised, it's worth taking a look at the RPCS3 wiki pages. Here you'll find details on game compatibility as well as some optimal settings. If your game has specific config recommendations, you can set these up by going to your game list in RPCS3 and right clicking the game, then selecting Create Custom Configuration and then make the required changes as recommended in the guide. You can also check the game compatibility database here. This is a quick reference guide to easily check compatibility status before getting stuck into trying to improve things yourself. In addition to official game update files we discussed earlier, RPCS3 offers game patches. These can be things such as frame rate unlock patches, FOV improvements, or just ways to access game debug settings. To access these patches, go to the menu and select Manage Game Patches. Note that RPCS3 may prompt you to update patches when you access the Game Patches section, in which case just click Yes to update all of the patches. Alternatively, you can click Download Latest Patches yourself. RPCS3 will return a list of patches if available for any games you've added to your library. To apply the patches, expand the rows by clicking the down arrow icon and tick the box of any patches you wish to utilise, then click Save. So by now, I imagine you just want to leave this guide and play a game. To launch a game, Go to your game list in RPCS3 and double click the game you wish to play. You'll then have a short wait whilst things compile ready to boot up the game. You'll likely see a message on screen that says it's compiling PPC modules or building SPU cache prior to the game booting. Just sit tight on your game will boot after a short wait. You'll also notice a message in the bottom left of the emulator that appears saying compiling shaders. This is quite normal and it's the emulator compiling the shader files as the game is played. You may find that whilst this is happening, some stuttering occurs, but don't worry, this is a one-time operation that happens only when there are new shader files to be compiled. So the next time you play this part of the game, this won't happen. Or at least you won't see it as often, depending on which game you're playing. If you want to play your game in full screen mode, simply press Alt and Enter together to switch between full screen and windowed modes. As mentioned earlier, RPCS3 and PS3 emulation in general is still very young, so performance between games does vary a great deal. But in the meantime, enjoy whatever you can and the excitement that PS3 emulation is finally in a really good state. Thanks for watching this guide. Be sure to check out the channel and howtoretro.com for more emulation guides. Thanks again and see you soon.